We are on a journey to find unique Namibian farming stories and we are going far and wide to introduce you to your local farmers. Join us on this adventure as we meet and document these unique personalities. Welcome to Farming the Future. My name is Abri van der Westhuizen. I'm 22 years old. I studied at Poch for one year. And then after that came back, I decided from the beginning I'm not gonna I'm not gonna study for three or four years. I wanted to come back and start working. Um, I was a year and a half. I was a financial advisor, and then from there I said no. I wanted to come to the farm. Um, farms always been my been my passion from from school. Um, I always did sports, but only in the week weekends. I always came to the farm. So no games or tournaments or championships for me. The farm was was in my weekends. My parents uh, bought this farm again after after some time when it wasn't in the family. My parents bought it again in 2004, um, actually 2003, sorry, um, 2003. And then in 2004, my grandfather started uh, farming with pigs here. Um, so it wasn't actually my decision. Uh, it was here when I, when I grew up and then we just expanded that. Um, and the poultry, uh, my father asked me in 2016 if I don't want to give it a go, want to give it a shot. And then in 2016, uh, we started farming with 50, 50 uh, broilers per, per month. And then from there on, we, we expanded and went bigger. Um, so lots of animals that can be farmed on a small piece of land, um, intensive and semi-intensive farming, and it makes sense for us. The, the fact of the matter is you do need capital to start farming. That's, that's unfortunately part of, part of the story. Um, so every farmer has to, or someone who try or wants to be a farmer, has to take their situation and they have to analyze it. So for me, I, I worked for one and a half year in the financial industry. I was a financial advisor. Um, there I generated some cap capital that I can use in the farm. And after I've done that, I came to the farm. I still received support in numerous ways from, from my parents, financial support, uh, from family, people who go, uh, got me markets where I can sell my products. Um, so yeah, you do need money, but there are ways that you can that you can start, that you can start small. It doesn't have to be the fanciest equipment it doesn't have to be the prettiest um, poultry houses or, or kraals. You can start with what you have and then from there you can start building it up, making it neater, um, doing it right. At the end of the day you can start small and you can start with what you have. But at the end of the day you have to improve it and you have to ensure that you can uh, make it neat, make it right, do it properly. Because if you have proper houses, make sure that it's weatherproof, then your losses are going to be much less in the future. So start with what you have but then slowly but surely build it up and up and improve it. Every month we purchase 700 broilers. Um, so every second week actually, every second week we purchase 400 and then the other second week we purchase 300. So in total it's 700 per month um, and we're hoping to expand by the end of next year, hopefully doing 2,000 a month. Um, Porks, we currently have about 320, it varies from week to week, um, as we slot and as new ones are born. Uh, but we currently have about 320 pork, uh, small, uh, pigs, small and big, um, about 320 of them. And then the manpower that we have on the farm, we have three permanent workers um, attending to the pigs, attending to the to the poultry, and then further just maintaining maintaining the farm, maintaining the garden. Uh, and then when we slaughter, which is also every second week, uh, we uh, have an extra five. We get an extra five contract workers for those couple of days that we slaughter. The broilers they get three types of three types of feed, and we purchase all of our our feed at Anim, uh, at Feedmaster. Um, Feedmaster is part of the Namib Mills Group. Um, so okay, three types of feed. The first 14 days they get broiler starter, which is a crumb. It's a bit smaller, so they can easily eat it. And then after that, it's broiler grower, 
which they eat all the way until the last three days before before we slaughter them. Um, the broiler grower is a pallet and the finisher, the broiler finisher, is also a pallet. Um, 100 chicks eat about more or less 400 kgs of, of food um, before they are slaughtered and uh, they live for 42 days. We, we slaughter at, at day 42, day 43 depending on, on, on the date. Um, so we have our own butchery as well as abattoir registered and uh, by, by health and safety. Um, our workers also went through the necessary tests. Um, okay, so pork we slaughter every week and we take them to the butchery uh, in Vintuk. Um, and sometimes some people contact us privately asking for, for a bit younger pigs um, and then we deliver that um, out of the hand. The, the sows are pregnant for three months, three weeks and three days. Uh, then they, uh, they furrow, the, furrow the young, which is about anything between 6 and 14, 14 piglets, um, depending on the, on the breed of the sow and the, 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 the type or the, the quality of the, the feed that they get. Um, so anything, anything from 6 to 14, um, from there they are weaned after one month. So for one month they are with the sow in, in, a, in, a, in a kraal. Um, from there they are they are weaned and five more months they are given given fodder and after that they are market ready um, so after after six months in total they are called um, porkers they are called porkers and their slaughtering weight is anything from 60 kgs upwards 60 to say 95 kgs um, and then they are market ready that type that size of that size of pig is usually going to the butcheries um, the butcher is like that size. Pork, you can also buy Feedmaster, very great, it's great, uh, great quality food, um, but we do something else. We purchase our own feed, mix our own feed up until about five months of age, and then we give them uh, the, the, the correct Feedmaster grower pellets. Um, it just rounds them off, it lets them grow much faster, um, but the feed that we mix, we've done it for a long time, and it does, uh, it is a bit more cost effective for us that way. Uh, one of the rising trends is free-range farming. Um, so people are becoming more aware about the about the health and about the the living circumstances of animals. Um, so the the trend is becoming to have free-range animals, free-range poultry, free-range pigs, um, and it's I think it's it's necessary for the farmers to start giving some attention to that um, because the markets are requiring that. And if the if you don't have a market, then you don't get an income for your for your animals. And from there you can't buy you can't buy the necessary feed and all of the other other things that you need to purchase to keep the farm up and running. Um, so free range farming has become more and more important for the farmer to take in, into consideration. Older people have more traditional ways of farming. Uh, they didn't necessarily uh, went to colleges or universities and studied farming. It's more about things like what they learned from their fathers and what they learned from the other farms that they worked at. Um, and I think that's good. I think they learn things practically that you never be uh, that you're never taught in college or in university. Um, on the other hand, some things in universities are based on facts, based on on, on um, experiments that people did, it's stat statistics. Um, so I think if you can just combine both of them, um, if there's a if there's a two way a two way if there's two way respect respect from both sides, um, where the people respect each other's opinions, um, listen what the other people have to say, and then combine the traditional way of farming from the older people from the older generation with the newer way of farming from the younger generation. If you can combine that, then I think. It's a, it's a, it's just it's a formula for success. Uh, for success, every day on the farm it's something different. So you can um, today you work outside. Tomorrow you have to st uh, spend some time on your admin work. Um, but you have to be you have to be a leader on the farm. You have to that what you want uh, to happen. You have to be there. You have to work with the workers. Um, you have to ensure that the things are done properly. Um, even if you get managers that can take control of the farming activities, you have to be there on a day-to-day -day basis or at least once a week, make sure that even the managers are doing um, what you ask them to do if they are managing your expectations.
the role of farmers in the country, I think they play, play a, huge, a huge role. Um, if you walk into Checkers Bar, any retailer, the food that you see on the shelves, it's either directly or via another factory from a farmer. Um, cheese, it comes from a, from a dairy farm. Uh, poultry that you get in the packets, it comes from a, from a poultry farm. So everything that you get in the shop, it's, it's the, the, the main ingredients, the, the beginning ingredients, it comes from the farm. The things to make everything that's in a shop, it comes from the farm. So for food security, farmers are vital. It's, there's no question about that. Um, except for producing locally and supplying people with food, um, supplying shops with food to be able to sell again. For the, that's, a, that's a source of income for the shops as well. Um, except for for the things that we export, um, there's a huge uh, demand or a huge opportunity for jobs, huge job creation. Um, so farms usually, except uh, especially in Mobius farms, it's uh, jo um, work intensive. So you need f uh, for us, for example, we have very few machines in the butchery that uh, that processes the the meat and the the things that we produce. It's mostly done by hand. Um, so yeah, we employ a, 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 a number of people and I know every other farm also does the same. I definitely think that Namibia needs more investments in the agricultural industry. Um, Namibia is young uh, it's, and it's, 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 it's booming actually, I think. So uh, investments of all sorts. I think investors can, can visit farms, they can see um, and they can have a look, talk to the, to talk to the farmers, what's their um, view of the future, what's their dreams. And if that farmer has huge dreams, dreams of expanding, they can do financial investments. And then for farmers that that wish to remain smaller, um, then fina uh, investments in terms of in terms of training. Even if the farmer doesn't have dreams of becoming big or becoming a mega farmer, they can still get training um, and making sure that the things that that farmer is farming with, that they do that optimally. Um, I think the urban farmers are actually doing good. Uh, the, I've, I've, I'm making a point of it to visit many farms, see how, uh, what they are doing, um, how, they are, how they are making money, um, and I've been very surprised. I think that's something that, that if, if there's something that other farmers can take from this, I think they can try and visit their neighboring farms, visit farms close to the nearest town, try to visit once a month just another farm, get an, an, another viewpoint um, of what the other people's are, people are doing, um, how they're making a living, and I think you can learn a lot. Um, I think it can also be a good thing if Ministry of Agriculture, I don't know if they already have a, have a, a project like that, but if they can try to find out what every farmer, every farmer in this country is doing on their farm. Is it subsist substance, uh, subsistence or is it commercial? Um, if it's subsistence, try to um, motivate those farmers, take them to, to courses uh, that they can learn, that they can see how to farm optimally, um, how to reduce their losses, um, how to make the best of their piece of land. Um, so go to courses, train, and then they can go and implement that on the farm. Um, I think there may be lots of potential in the agricultural industry. So we must just utilize it.